the lighting of the fourth candle for peace. We light, Lord, the candle for peace. And Lord, in a world where conflict, war, conflagration never seems to be absent, you are the Prince of Peace. And this season is all about the proclamation of the peace of God. May Lord your kingdom come and give us courage to be peacemakers and standard bearers of your kingdom. Amen. Welcome to Historic Trinity Cathedral here in the heart of downtown San Jose. We are so glad you've chosen to join us for worship. We do worship at 10.30 a.m. on Facebook Live in English y también en español a las doce y media cada domingo. Every Sunday we welcome you just as you are, whatever your language is, uh, whatever burdens you're carrying, whatever hopes you care to share with us. We are delighted to share them with you in the worship of God. In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have sinned against, against you. you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to, to the, the Son, and, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Amen. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. 
serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house made of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed more, no more and evil doers shall afflict them no more. As formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your love, O oh Lord, forever will I sing. Your love, O oh Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the hands. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Your love, O oh Lord, forever will I sing. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, 
and my arm will make him strong. Your love, O oh Lord, forever will I sing. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Your love, O oh Lord, forever will I sing. Glory to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Where, where does God live? That's a serious question, or at least it was a question of utmost seriousness in the 11th century BCE, at the time when David had largely united the tribes of Israel into the kingdom that God had promised him. Having won peace and stability, David decided to do something really special for God, specifically to build him a house. Now, we probably don't take the question of God's dwelling in a proper place quite as seriously as King David and his prophet Nathan did. We know that God isn't limited to dwelling in our churches, for example, even as one as beautiful as this particular house of cedar or of fir and redwood, as the case may be. But the desire behind this question, the desire to Locate God and do God honor in his rightful place. That's true of all people in all times and places, no? It's why we humans worldwide build shrines and temples, why we set aside sacred spaces, and why I've encouraged you to even build home altars in your houses during Advent. Sacred spaces 
focus our devotion and help us to remember the earthly presence of God, which is a belief as old as the Genesis story of God walking in the garden with Adam and Eve. If God is among us, wouldn't we want to know where? And me, I'm a priest. I work in and minister in and care for sacred spaces, and I think they're good for us. I'm preaching this sermon to you from one such house of God right now. So I have to wonder, why didn't God want David to build him a house? That's the gist of our first reading today. David tells his prophet Nathan of his grand plans to build God a house, a temple for the Ark of the Covenant. And although Nathan initially concurs, he subsequently has a dream in which God repudiates the temple building plan and then includes a good healthy scolding for David as well. I have not lived in a house since the day I brought the people of Israel up from Egypt to this day, God says to Nathan in his dream, but I have been moving about in tent and tabernacle wherever I've moved about among the people of Israel. Did I ever speak a word saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? In Nathan's dream, God calls David to account and reminds him that he does not know the will or the mind of God. It's a humbling encounter for the newly powerful king. So pause with me while I think about this for a second. How often have I done that? Told God my plans? In hindsight, I'm so very grateful for the prophets, in my case, people like my husband, my children, friends, parishioners, who recognized what I was up to and told me to like back off, told me that the plan I was making was my own and not God's, told me that a little more prayerful listening might be in order before I set off to build on my own, to build a temple or balance a budget or do something else that made all kinds of sense to me. A year and a few months ago, you called me to serve with you at Trinity Cathedral. I was qualified, I was well informed, I had read your profile and your history, and we'd talk, and I'd talked to your search committee members. I was full of plans of what we might accomplish in our first year of ministry together. We'd be out in the community proclaiming good news and welcoming people inside our buildings for new ways of worshiping and serving. We'd have a bigger choir singing its joy. Nowhere, nowhere in my plans did I imagine a fully online program of worship and classes and prayer. Nowhere did I see the passion and gifts of our digital worship team. Ministry needed to be done in an entirely different way than I had planned. And if I had not been able to hear a prophetic voice, several prophetic voices really, I wouldn't be here now. That's David and me planning the wrong thing for God since 1100 BCE. But then again, you've probably heard the old saw, if you want to make God laugh, Tell her your plans. Now, a full millennia after David's experience of changed plans, a young girl engaged to a man in the lineage of that very same King David had no plans whatsoever to build a house for God. She was just trying to make sense of a rather extraordinary heavenly visitor who invited her to participate in God's plan to bear Jesus for the world. Because we've been observing festivals to the Virgin Mary all month in our Spanish-speaking congregation here at Trinity, I'm guessing you're all more than familiar with the gospel story we just heard. Recall that, according to Luke, the angel Gabriel appears to a young bride living in a backwater town and announces that she will bear a child in the line of David, but even greater than the king himself, for he will be called the Son of God. Of God. So despite the thousand years of difference between these two stories, 
there are some striking similarities. Both involve young people, David and Mary, called out of relative obscurity to serve God's saving and redeeming purposes in rather extraordinary ways. In both stories, we hear of God's consistent concern for the throne and the house of David, without which God's plan could not be carried out. May these stories serve to remind all of us that God is calling unprepared young people and unprepared old people and brown people and white people and LGBTQ people and straight people and male people and female people and gender fluid people to do God's work. That's how God gets things done and the Bible bears witness from beginning to end. But I want to call attention to an important difference between David and Mary, faithful servants, though they both were. David told God of his own plans, whereas Mary listened to God's plans. Take a moment to absorb that difference, because it's really the heart of Advent good news. God is going to do something wonderful in our midst. Even in the midst of the various disasters described in our Advent scriptures and lived out in our current circumstances, all things are possible with God. This is a truism you can count on, friends. But we'll miss the miracles if we are intent on making them happen for ourselves according to the normal rules of human sovereignty. God God cannot be domesticated. God will do what God wills to do. But will God find willing servants in us? That's a real question, and I direct it to myself as much as to any of the rest of us. We cannot tell God what to do, and despite David's honest, I believe sincere attempt to give back, we do not have the capacity to reciprocate God's extraordinary grace. All that we can do and all that we must do is give God the fullness of our attention. That's how we prepare ourselves to see the wild star. That's how we notice the holiness in the beleaguered mother and the vulnerable child. That's how we have the courage to name him God with us. As for this holy house, this very holy house, well, I've seen evidence of God's love all over this building, so I'm pretty confident that God dwells right here. But since I'm one of very few who worships inside these days, I'm, I'm grateful for Nathan's reminder, given for David, but also for us, that God is actually perfectly happy to dwell in the traveling tent. While God won't be constrained to the grand construction of kings, God actually loves those soft and vulnerable places, places like the womb of a young girl or a straw-lined manger, places like the broken dreams of those of us who are forced to, or at least willing to, let go of our carefully laid plans. No matter whatever else we may have in mind for this Advent and Christmas, let us renew our faith in the one who is faithful to us. Let us pause and listen for the knock at the door of our hearts. God is standing there, ready to dwell in the one house God really wants to live in. Amen. Happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to the last week of Advent, where we slowly start the transition into, well, into the Christmas season. And you can see we've already started to decorate the church with a lovely creche. But we have to ask ourselves, why is this scene so important of Joseph and Mary and all the animals and the wise men uh, hanging out in a manger? Why do we 
put so much weight on this story. Because it's, it's not a story where things go right. We start with Joseph and a very pregnant Mary traveling for days to Bethlehem to, to fill out a census, to do some paperwork. And when they get to Bethlehem, all the inns are full. There's no comfortable place for them to stay. And so they continue searching in a cold night. And eventually the owner of a manger says, well, you can sleep with the animals if you want. And after all that, it's time for Mary to give birth. But in this story of things going so wrong, I see this beautiful moment of humanness and thankfulness. If we put ourselves into Mary's shoes for a second, after a long day of traveling and a frustrating first night in Bethlehem, there she is, warm and safe with her newborn son, a husband who loves here, her in an odd cast of wise men and sleepy animals that are looking at Jesus in a way that tells us that they know how important he is. And in these hard days for Mary, and she knows that the next couple of years with her special son will be anything but easy, we can imagine her taking a moment to, to breathe, that the things that are most important, just her and her family being safe after a long journey, she can finally be thankful. And she can be thankful for the things in this story that are the most important. It's a lovely tale of what really is important in this world. But hopefully this crash show helps us share this lovely story and we'll be sharing another story next week. The faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in, in God, God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven, heaven and, earth. and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Our Lord. He was, he was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the and life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the, and the glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, 
that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. faithful of your church who trust the Holy Eucharist to be your body and blood given for us. We desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 